Want to make your program drums and samples sound more realistic? Today I'm going to show you how to set up velocity layers to do exactly that. Why? Because velocity layers are the key to making your drums respond naturally to different playing intensities. In turn, this makes the overall performance sound more natural and more dynamic. In this video, we're going to be using the RS5K Manager Sampler script inside of Reaper, but this technique can be applied to any drum rack or any drum machine plugin with a few tweaks here and there, and I'll point those out as we go. Real quick before we get started, be sure to pick up my free 7 Steps to a Pro Level Mix PDF. The link is in the description below. Now let's dive right in. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be using the RS5K Manager in Reaper. If you need help setting this up, installing the scripts, and using Repack, be sure to check out the video on that and that'll get you up and running in just a matter of minutes. So first things first, once you have a new project in Reaper open, and want to create a new track, double click Track Control Panel. And if you have the RS5K Manager scripts readily installed, you can go ahead and load it up on this track. Now I have a shortcut for that, but you can also run it from the actions menu. So that's the question mark keyboard shortcut or shift slash. That'll bring up the actions list and you can look up RS5K manager. Okay, and it's the one that says background and then you can click run. Now this pulls it up with the pad overview on the left and the drum rack on the right. And this is very similar to other drum racks and drum machines that you would find in other DAWs like Logic or Ableton. And then I have my media explorer over here. And you basically just want to open it up, navigate to where your samples are, and then we can start loading in these velocity layers. Now, if you can acquire multiple velocity samples, so samples where they've recorded, say, the same kick at different intensities, then this will come out even better. But if you can't, it's okay. You can find similar sounding drums, say four similar sounding kick drums, where one sounds soft and low and increases in varying degrees of intensity, where the last one would be loud and boomy. It will work either way. Here I have ones where they've actually recorded the intensities at different levels. So I have kick one, two, three, and four. So let's take a listen. Same thing with the snare, take a listen. Okay, so that's what you're going for with your samples before you even get started. You wanna have at least four, but you can load them up as many as you want. You have up to essentially 128 different velocities, but that's a little overkill. Now in most other drum racks, what you would initially do is take, say, the four kicks and load them onto different pads, like I'm doing here, and then you would rename the notes all to the same note. So kick one would be C2, kick two would be C2, kick three would be C2, kick four would be C2. But that uses up four different pads on your drum rack. In RS5K Manager, it's even more simple than that. So we'll undo that and we'll load up our four kicks all onto the same pad. So I'm gonna use C2 for this. And the way that you load multiple samples on one pad is to use the device. Okay, so we click device and that'll show up here. And I'll click kick one, bring it right there. Now kick one is loaded on this pad. You can see it over here under the device. We're gonna add kicks two through four into the device as well. Now all four of these kicks will play at the same time on that one note. And you can see here in the track control panel that all four kicks will be playing. Okay, that's great, but how do you adjust the velocities? Well, this is where it gets a little detailed, but not too difficult. We can go into each one of those kicks because RS5K Manager creates a separate kick track for each sample, and they're grouped under a folder for the note. So they're all grouped under that note 36 or that C2 note. And under each kick sample, we have Resamplematic 5000 under the hood. Here's where the important part happens. This is where we adjust the velocity layers of each of the samples. So you open up the instance of Resamplematic 5000 for each of these samples by clicking the effects. And then in here, you're gonna set the velocity minimum and maximum. So for the quietest kick, I'm gonna go from a velocity minimum of one up to 40. Okay, and you can see that the node is C C2 here. All of the kicks have been routed to this one note. That's what using the device in RS5K Manager did. So for kick two, we want to start at 41. Okay, we don't want to overlap with the previous sample because I have samples that vary in intensity and I don't want multiple samples playing at once. Now, if you wanted to overlap, there's a whole way to do that and I'll let you know in a little bit. But for now, we're going to keep each sample on its own velocity range. So the second loudest one is going to go from 41 to 80. Okay, so a little more intense, but still not too loud. The third one, we're going to start at 81. Again, not to overlap. And we'll go to 100. And then the last one, we'll start at 101. 
to 127, the loudest possible velocity. So now that we've set the velocities for each of the kicks, I'm going to play with varying levels of intensity from quiet to loudest, and you can see here in the metering which sample is getting picked up. So the very quietest is kick one. Then a little bit more intensity playing the key. Okay, and even more intensity, you'll see kick three. And then if I go the hardest I can, and you might actually hear the keyboard in my microphone playing this this hard, you should be able to see kick four light up. Now, why are we doing this? You could take one sample and adjust different velocities to it. Like a lot of people program the MIDI notes and they'll adjust the velocities up and down so it feels more realistic. But if you have different samples that play at different intensities, where well, you can just get them to trigger depending on how hard you're hitting the key or how hard you're hitting the note, it just makes for such a realistic feel. It almost seems like an actual drummer is playing the drums. Now let's do the same thing with the snare real quick. So rapid recap mode. I'm gonna open the RS5K manager again. We're gonna use D2 for the snare. So I'm gonna pull one snare into there. And you can see once I'm on highlighted on the snare or on D2, you can see the device for the snare. We'll pull in the rest of the samples here. Okay, so now we have the snare samples up here. And then I'll go into the snare velocities for each of the Resamplematic 5000 instances on each of those snare tracks and do the exact same thing. Okay, so now I'll show you how this can play out and how it can sound when you have a kit together. So open your sampler or RS5K manager one more time. I'll pull in a few other samples. Okay, so I'll put a couple hi-hats and a crash in here. And then one thing to focus on, depending on the sample or the sound that you want, you want to pay attention to the node offs. So for my crash, I want them to ring out as long as the sample is. So I'm going to turn those off, those node offs off. But for the hi-hats, these two work together. You have one hi-hat, whether you're playing open or closed. So instead of having both of these automatically cut as soon as I'm done playing, you kind of want it to ring until the next hi-hat hit occurs. So for the node offs here, we're going to keep those on. And then if you go to children chain so this is all the samples under this drum pad right here in the drum rack and for the hi-hat open and hi-hat closed i'm just going to assign them to the same choke group so you click here choke group one same thing on the hi-hat open so now because they're assigned to the same choke group that means that playing either one of these will cut the other one short if it's ringing out so if the hi-hat open is ringing and i hit the hi-hat close it's going to stop the hi-hat open just another tip to make your drums sound more realistic. Okay, so let's take a listen. Okay, and obviously those are very dry samples. There's not a lot of processing going on with them, but the idea here is it sounds like a raw kit. It sounds like somebody being mic'd up. Even more so, it sounds more like real drums than it would if you just tried to use velocities with one drum. Okay, so if you don't want to use a third-party drum machine or drum rack and you want to get started right away in Reaper, I have created a free drum machine template that you can load onto any track, and then you can start importing your samples from there. It'll need a few tweaks so that you add additional tracks for your velocity layers, but it should be simple enough to follow as long as you follow the steps in this video. And as always, I want to thank you for joining the Ultimate Mixdown. I'll see you in the next video.